Hi, I'm Liz Bramwell from Rustic Kitchen Boston, home of The Cooking Show. Each week I host a live cooking show in our unique broadcast kitchen studio, right here inside the restaurant. Here's some clips from last week's show. We call them Small Bites. Two gentlemen, please join me in welcoming your host, Elizabeth Bramwell. Tonight's first course is gonna be a small sampling of a tuna tartare, a little bit of tamari vinaigrette, as well as some spicy condimento, a little uh, pistachio cracker. You're gonna love it. And then for dinner, you'll be enjoying a pan-seared sesame and soy crusted tuna. Right, we're serving that rare over wasabi mashed potatoes, tempura fried green beans, and a small salad of arugula, carrot, and cucumber. Yes, I know, it's gonna be good. So, now, speaking of tuna, how many of you have heard of or seen the TV show Wicked Tuna? Raise your hand. Fabulous. <laughs> so, I do have a special treat for you this evening. One of the stars of Wicked Tuna is here with us in this studio, right? And I do want you to give him the same warm welcome that you gave to me when I came in here, to my buddy Scott Ferrio. Get a little down on that one. <laughs> As you can see, Scott right. is very shy, all right? He's an incredibly shy guy, so I'm gonna need you all to help me throughout the evening, bring him Drag out of his, Drag yes, his Drag shell, it. or his skin, or his scales, or whatever. Whatever you'd like to write. Scales. <laughs> so, Scotty, I hope you're not too embarrassed. I did, oh, I did put together no, no. a little video oh, of no. all of my oh, favorite no. clips. No, you didn't. I did. Uh -oh. It's gonna be a little Well, I would love to show you the video clip. Okay. Good. Jim, will you do me a favor? Please roll das footage. Parks right next to you. Only bad things can happen. Oh, come over there! I'll kill you! No, I like a scream and yell at this, and he doesn't think he's doing anything wrong because he has no idea. Because he's he's a gooby. A little more. Bump it and bump it, Donna. Go for it. Go for it. What they don't realize is the effort. The effort it takes to uh, reel one of these things in. <laughs> there are no secrets in tuna fishing. You just have a great attitude. That's <laughs> Woo! Yay! That was good. So, Scotty, I brought you a gift. Life. Hey, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those of you who have never seen a full-size tuna one and you just go to a restaurant and get a perfectly, you know, That's seared it. piece of it, this is what it looks like before I get my hands on it. This is yellowfin tuna, right? What do you catch, Scotty? We target bluefin tuna fish. Gotcha. Which is the, in Japan, it's the primary fish that they love for sushi. Give, do you want to give them an idea of the range of, so, you know, price per pound? You know, it's funny, when the boat price, the price we were actually paid for the fish, uh, is really uh, just a small portion of what they actually sell it for in Japan. So um, there are fish that actually get sold at auction in Japan that are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Scary, so, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. We never had one of those. That's right, but, because you'll always be in business and yeah. you'll always be making money off of them. All right, so. I'm gonna build a very simple vinaigrette, lemon vinaigrette. It's a vinaigrette we use in house. I love it. All right, so a little honey in here. Now we're gonna wait until the very end to season our 
vinaigrette with salt and pepper. And ideally what I'm gonna do is just stand here and very slowly whisk in my oil. Real, 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 real. Real, 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 real. Come on! Come on! <laughs> what is what is the Nantucket sleigh ride? Nantucket sleigh ride. The Nantucket sleigh ride is, is actually pretty frightening. If you paid attention to the little sizzle reel, you saw a dragger I was screaming at. What happens is a dragger, he has a big net, he's dragging along the bottom of the ocean, and he's scooping up all the fish that, that are on the bottom. When we're anchored up, our anchor is in the water, up to 400 feet away from our boat. These draggers, who think they own the ocean, unfortunately, um, they will, if you're in their way, they will come by you and try to scare you out of the way. They want you to actually pick up your anchor and move because you're in their fishing area, their, their ocean. For the most part, we're not gonna move. In the hierarchy of fishing, if you're anchored up in fishing, you're at the top of the totem pole and other boats have to maneuver around you. In this instance, we stayed anchored. Big dragger. Came by us and tried to scare us. He circled all the way around and he actually scooped up our anchor. So he keeps going, zoom! Now he's got your anchor and he's dragging you uh, along with him. That's Happens horrifying. Is, it is scary because if there are times when we are bridle anchored, it's off the side of the boat. And in those instances, they actually could actually flip the boat, take the boat and flip it right over. That's a man took it free ride. <laughs> <laughs> what is your like your best or funniest or coolest story about fishing or like a fish tale? <laughs> the bounty hunters you, you see it now is, is the Duffy style Downey's boat. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that, we had a sport fishing boat, and you know, ten years ago, fifteen years ago. <laughs> We used to fish out of a fighting chair. We used to actually fight the tuna fish out of those chairs. And by fight, you mean reel in? Yeah, reel in, okay. yes. So in the fighting chair, you have a, what's called a bucket harness, all right? The bucket harness is what sits around your ass and has two straps and comes up and hooks on the reel. So if you're fighting the fish correctly, you're using most of your legs as leverage, not using a lot of your upper body and arms. So you're, you know, it's leverage. You're, you're pushing back on the bucket harness, back and forth with your legs on the bucket and reeling and back and forth, and reeling and back. So as this process is going, this fish was huge to boot. I mean, he took a run. He went, zoom. He went way, he buried, buried us on the on the dacker, way into the dacker on the reel. So he knew it was a big fish. So as I'm fighting this fish, you know, forward, reel. Back, pull, reel. The bucket harness is riding up and down on my ass. It's like up and down, up and down. And, and, like in a dirty oh. way or a good way? <laughs> in the end, in the end, it wasn't. He did not answer that because he said dirty or good. He did not answer. Avoiding the answer to the question. In the end, everybody it wasn't use good. your imagination. So, as as we fight this fish, as I fight this fish, and you know, an hour goes by, and. I feel like a little breeze. I'm like, Wait, a good breeze or a bad breeze? A bad breeze. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and I'm hearing, like, the rest of the crew starts to laugh. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? Through so the motion of the, the bucket harness, dragging my shorts down around my ankles. So, there I am. Oh, yeah, butt naked, I'm fighting a fish, and the rest of the crew is just hysterical. <laughs> laugh. From that day on, hey, Flash! Flash! I'm like, pull my pants up. Put they, wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. They made me fight that fish with, you know, my junk hanging out. <laughs> Let's have a cheers. Cheers to Scotty's junk. <laughs> Here is my sesame crusted tuna. What do you think, guys?